So many of you are familiar with the mud flood theory, okay? So the mud flood theory is, is as a few of our friends have discovered on the internet, such as, uh, let's say, uh, who do we got? Who do we got? We have uh, Flat Earth British. We have uh, Static in the Attic. And we have a few others that started going through archive.org, as I do often, and started going through all of the old books, and there's tons of, tons of them, and then started finding pictures of basically uh, a time in, in, in the world that was rather recent, but is very advanced. And even different types of technology, stuff running off of uh, what looks like Tesla cables and and, and, and trains and trains of children being shipped to the United States to do labor and all these things that are actually almost absent from history, but absent from history because most people don't read. Most people don't operate the Scantron. Most people are not going to archive.org and knowing what the keywords are to lead you from one, one thing to another, to go and find the ancient origins of Israel, the ancient origins of Samaria, you know, different words and names that actually connect you and other things because all of this is written. They would try to make you think, and in this case, they is the ones who feel like they're the custodians of the world that are totally mismanaging it. They would like you to think that we, we don't know what happened. <laughs> And that's why they're in every single institution. That's why they're gatekeepers in every single extent is because they're hiding a certain level of knowledge that only happened not too long ago. So let's read this because I know some of y'all already have what this is saying. Now, I'm just going to give you a complete awareness here of what's happening. OK, that what happened right at around 1000 B.C. Everything reset. Here's a direct testament. We Sons of Canaan from Zidon. Now, remember, in Canaan, there are so many sons of Canaan because Canaan had several different wives. So when they say the sons of Canaan, they still have not said anything. So meaning that you still have not identified exactly who we're talking about. So it says we, the sons of Canaan from Zidon, may commercial enterprise from the royal city, dispatch to the land of the rivers and riverward, prosper as a support to the land of the lofty ridges like Lebanon and Carmel, the chosen seat of the superintending gods and the superintending goddesses in the 19th year of Hiram, our mighty king. OK, first of all, this is a living account that Hiram was really a king. Now, in Masonic or Freemasonic in the story, you learn that King Hiram Abif was murdered by who is now the Masons. And he was murdered because he had a key. He had a secret and he had a mystery that he never told them. This is the story, but it's a riddle. And because he never told that story or he never gave that key and he was killed before he gave it, it was lost. And they call that the lost key. I'm telling you that lost key is the goddess. So here we go. Hiram. Our mighty king, we set out from under his scepter. Now, when you go from under the scepter of a king, that means that you're betraying the king. That's why the next thing it says is renounced allegiance. So this means that whoever's talking here knew Hiram, worked for Hiram, but then traded on Hiram, ditched Hiram, renounced the allegiance to Hiram, okay? And overhauled a merchant man at sea getting along with 10 ships. So they are basically saying that we disavow from the kingdom of Hiram. We took 10 ships and we went out to the sea as merchant men. OK, now this is actually the ones who are in charge of Freemasonry. Now, this is their story. They are the sons of Canaan, but they are not all of those who resided in Canaan. After which it says we were at sea together two years coasting round a land of heat or the land of Ham that is in Africa. And then we separated. So these fools couldn't even get along with themselves. They separated mighty floods. OK, here's the account. Mighty floods of water carried or lifted up our company on shipboard thence. And we came thither, 12 men in all and three women to a new land. Right here, it's accounting. They got shipwrecked and only 12 of them and three women survived. And they went to the new island. Now, 
I've went through this complete text. That new island was actually Spain. This is possibly the origin of who we were calling the Moors then. Which I have mightily enriched and have subdivided. May the superintending gods and superintending goddesses be propitious to us. Okay, so this is a statement. Now I'm going to go on. Established at Zion, but according to the Chronicles of Ari, the surge in the Atlantic, which deluged the extremity of Britain. Okay, so I'm, I'm showing you here this mighty flood they're talking about is also reaccounted here. But according to the Chronicles of Ari, which is also the book of. Um, give me one second here. I'll give you a reference here just in case uh, some of y'all want to check this out. Let me see. This is Osseus. Give me one second here. This is Ocean and the Clyde. Okay, so let me. Um, that's O S S I A N. Ocean and the Clyde. That's C L Y D E. This book is available on archive.org. It's about 400, 500 pages of the account of the Isles of Albion in Ireland in ancient times and the Celtic Druids in, this, in the traditions in which they practice and how they bear witness to the accounts of the state of the world uh, in, in, their own, in their own text. OK, and so. As we go on, it says, but according to the Chronicles of Airy, which are in Oceans of the Clyde, the surge in the Atlantic, which deluged the extremity of Britain and separated the Sicilian Isles from Cornwall, occurred in, occurred in 1031 B.C. OK, so it's showing you and there's other references that I have at this, that this this upheaval of whatever took place on Earth, which is possibly a, a planet passing by or a star. Do, caused the waters to come out and deluged and changed up the geographics of many different countries that you're seeing now broke islands off that's how powerful it was and it happened in 1031 bc and here's an account so why all the mud flood people have been looking for this evidence the evidence is right here let me give you one more account before i close this it says the dates thus harmonize among themselves in an astonishing manner and the great geological event recorded some volcanic surge that shakes the mountains of Palestine, rends the coast of Great Britain, destroys naves in the Mediterranean and sweeps pirates from the Atlantic to Peru is the same precisely. OK, so there is a very close account here that is very important that the author has maintained and preserved that. This cataclysm swept pirates, people who were vagabonds, people who were thieves onto the shores of other countries that were already fall, falling out from the latest destruction that happened. This is the, also the exact mud flood account. And that's that you, wouldn't, you weren't getting into what we call now the United States that whole area, 1000 BC, was it, that was the great, it, the great Isles of Atlantis, the, in, the ends and the beginnings of the world. Then you had the Pillars of Hercules. Man, everybody was bezeled out. Everybody was aware of the consciousness flowing and lots of stuff happening. And then the shift. Hey, shift happens. The only thing that you got to be prepared for is that there's going to be some changes. And in that process, many cultures are sitting there trying to get their stuff back together. But the seafaring pirates, they were regrouping fast and became the ones who actually took advantage of the situations because they could reach places that no one even had known about. So they came into lands that had been completely desolated and only thing that was remaining was all their shrines and all their their uh, their knowledge and their wisdom and secrets that had been written on stones and rocks and symbolism. And they took that just as a thief will steal a signet ring of a king and masquerade around as if he's the king. They took those things and then said that those things belong to them and they became the custodians of those things. Now, it also mentions and I didn't close it. I didn't enclose it here, but these pirates were also, quote unquote, pimps. They kept women as slaves also on board their ships and often went into territory and used these women. If we talked about about Saguni the Jew and the whole aspects of understanding a person's weaknesses, the arts of Machiavelli, all of these different things they were utilizing and learning because they were pirates.